of Delver Storm matchups this round. Tan Grace and Ross Merriam over on our time shifted match. We have Daryl Ayers and Caleb Shear. Two players notoriously great at coming in second. <laughs> <laughs> If they were to meet in the finals, do you think they just somehow both get disqualified? I don't know. I think you're not supposed to, you know, <laughs> it's like you're not supposed to touch a doppelganger, no. you know? Oh, oh. so you think this is some, like, time travel type of stuff. Yeah. Right. Du duress from Ross takes force of will. And if you look over at the cardboard live extension for the deck list that are available from both players, Ross is playing the full four duresses this weekend over any copies of Cabal Therapy. Tan's running off with some pressure. It is a copy of Delver of Secrets. It's so one of the more important cards in this matchup. You'd like to put pressure on Storm early. Right. See, a lot of your cards... Storm is going to be able to overcome them eventually or find the way to thread the needle, so to speak. It's whenever you are able to apply pressure and put Storm in a spot where they have to act, even though they might not have the way to fight through everything. All right, and a big turn winding up here from Ross. Some mana onto the table. It is Lion's Eye Diamond and Lotus Petal now casting Dark Ritual. This looks like the turn spell number three. Let's make it four for Cabal Ritual. He has four black floating. Fifth spell is Lotus Petal, five mana. Here's Ad Nauseam. That's the sixth spell of the turn, and Tannen does have the Force of Will. Blech. Picked that one up. Ross had taken the first Force of Will with Duress. That means Tannen just had one Stripped turn to draw it. it. Yep. Had it the whole way. What a beating. Ross clearing the way, you know. Un <laughs> yeah, and that was his whole hand. Right, and, you know, there are some draws that can end up getting Ross out of this if he can just find, say, another mana source in a Pasta Flame in Flames, for example. But that okay. Ad Nauseam is one of the best cards at helping you recoup lost cards. And now Tannen's pressure is a bit light here. The Delver has not transformed, so he's made his entire hand, which is two Delvers and a young Pyromancer. So, like, ideally that top card is Brainstorm, and if it is, Tannen's, you know, going to town. R Ross did does have an Infernal Tutor on top of his deck. Okay, so he preordains... Draws, he's going to pass this turn. So maybe one more turn on Infernal Tutor? Right. So here, if Ross finds another mana source on top, for example, he can Infernal Tutor, hold priority, crack the Lion's Eye Diamond for red, get past yeah. Flames, have that, that extra mana source on the battlefield, and likely just go from there. Yeah, well, he's going to have to go next turn as he goes down to eight. And Tannen's draw might mess things up. Here's a copy of a braid. Oh it actually plays my. here. Right. So it can hit Lion's Eye Diamond or Lotus Petal. Upkeep, Tannen abrades the Lion's Eye Diamond. All right, and it looks like Ross has a copy of Cabal Ritual that he found off of this. So there may be something that he can do if he chains Infernal Tutors. Okay, so we're thinking he has to, he, right here, he just has to let the Lion's Eye die, right? If he discards his hand, then end just, of story. He, exactly, he doesn't have any kind of payoff card. He doesn't have anywhere that this mana can go. At this point, Ross is likely just trying to figure out all right, what is the luckiest series of draws I can have that can result in me winning this game? All right. He's thinking about it. Yeah, this is in upkeep. So right, he's, just one more card is on the way. Now, if you make mana here, the mana pool clears before the draw step, so he can't spend it to do anything. He's not really playing to an out. Right, and even then, you, you just can't crack this Lion's Eye Diamond, or you're going to have to discard the Infernal Tutor anyway. Yeah. I think at this point, Ross isn't necessarily thinking about whether or not this abrade is going to resolve. It's Ross considering if he's going to just concede and move on. Well, this is the seventh card in his graveyard. Right. So you're right. There is, I think he's, what, he's trying to piece together the turn. So right. If he, Right, so this is so on the board. So the Cabal Ritual would make put him up to five mana. Yep, and it looks like he's actually a mana short here. Okay, so yeah, Ross will pick up the cards as Tannen gets the win. Walk me through the line he was looking at. So if you have your two lands in your Lotus Petal, seven cards in Graveyard, so you have yeah. three total mana available. So you right? start with Cabal Ritual. Right, which puts you up to a total of... It's plus six. three. It's plus three. So that's going to put you up to six mana, mm -hmm. which you can then Infernal Tutor down, down to, to four. four mana. And the best thing you could get there is Past in Flames, but then you don't have a mana to flash anything back from your graveyard, unfortunately. Yeah. And actually, that was an abrade during the draw step, so there's not another card coming for Ross to look at. Exactly. The Cabal Ritual was the draw for turn. Right. Yeah, there's nothing. I mean, 
He can get a tendrils and then cast it for a small amount of mana. Right. So even in that case, you have Cabal Ritual is one, Infernal Tutors two, the tendrils is three. A braid's you, four. Oh, a braid is four. That is correct. So you end up draining Tannin for eight, but that, that only buys you one more draw step anyway. Since and there's that's the to clock go. that Grace was presenting. And if one card off the top of your deck, or if any card in your deck with Infernal Tutor isn't good enough, then one random card is definitely not good yeah. enough. So Tannin Grace up one game to zero. You know, honestly, I really like how Rost played that one. It felt like that was his game after turn one duress into the turn two all in. It always looks bad when a player shoves all their cards in and gets countered, but it really felt like it was the right move from Ross. Right, and when you play these storm decks, you're definitely playing a numbers game to a point where, what, what does Ross do? Wait more turns? He didn't have any extra hand disruption to go with it. So he's just giving Tannen more time to find these situational removal spells, and he had the win through days. So you, it was just the other three. Three draws beat him, and the rest are wins. Exactly. It's pretty good odds. Yeah, and that's a spot where you know sometimes it doesn't work out, but you gotta do, you gotta go for it, right? You gotta yep. pick your spots. So Tan getting one of those a strong win, winning game one against Storm, especially on the draw. Pretty nice spot for Tan and Grace. Oh, it's got to feel really nice. But there is a point where Tan also just had the formula, right? He had two Force of Wills, two Delver of Secrets. That's pretty and great. Another creature that is. That's how you draw yeah. it up. You got to counter a couple of payoff cards, and the Abrade even had play that game. Yeah, actually, without the Abrade, it's a way more interesting game. Ross may have something. Exactly. Exactly. There's a spot there where you have three additional mana from the Lion's Eye Diamond. You get the Past in Flames and cast it, and then you get to flashback yeah. Dark Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Cabal Ritual. Your I think he gets tutor, there. Your Tendrils killed Tannen. Yeah, without the Abrade, it looks like Ross actually has the win. Yeah, because there's the point where you just make so much mana, you're in, you yeah. can Infernal Tutor chain to, like, Infernal Tutor, get an Infernal Tutor, get an Infernal Tutor, get Tendrils, kill you. All right. Well, I do want to look at the sideboards here. So on Tannen's side, he's going to have some other ways of interacting with the combo. He does have some bit, some uh, Surgical Extraction, two copies of it, and one copy of Grapdigger's Cage to interact with the Graveyard. He also has more Abrades if he wants to continue to fight over those mana rocks and also has three copies of pyroblast to fight over cantrips given that where do you want to see him go so the things that i'm looking at are the anti-combo cards you originally listed the surgical kind of obvious graph diggers kind of obvious pyroblast is one where if tannum wants to try and just fight over those cantrips he does have that avenue available to him the abrades are fine if ross has multiple lion's eye diamonds but otherwise can be a little bit hard to line up uh, but the other thing that Grace may end up wanting to lean into is a single copy of something like Marsh Casualties as a Staticaster, as those are things that help Grace check something like Empty the Warrens from Ross. So one win for Tannen. Kind of has a reputation here being the perennial bridesmaid at the events. A ton, second, still looking for that first win, but his stats are not to be argued with. 11 all-time top eights. Uh, in the 2018, he has played... He has last year and played 16 opens top eighted seven of them it's some really nice stats here for tannin and a strong player on the tour i honestly just really want him to get like 11 more wins so we can start making 27 dresses jokes oh man <laughs> he's capable right tannin yeah incredible. yeah this is not me ragging on him i want him to make the finals 11 times this year yeah, a lot of those were team-constructed opens, Ross actually being a teammate in a lot of them. Now, in these opens, Tannen has almost always been the legacy player with Grixis Delver. So this is, you know, his comfort zone this weekend. Exactly. This is something Tannen has just been a mainstay with these Delver strategies for, good grief, when did Innistrad come out? 2011, 2012? Oh, man. Yeah, 2011. Yeah, he's been playing Delver about that long. Fair enough. <laughs> Young Pyromancer was a little bit later, I think. That's true. So yeah, so maybe it was it a wasn't different. Grixis before it was then. It was probably teamer. teamer. Yeah. Yeah, definitely a teamer, man. Duress again, turn one from Moss. Let's take a look. Ponder, Days, Days, Brainstorm, Surgical Extraction, Delver, and one Ooh. land. This is so hard to get through. This is a hand. Your opponent has a turn one Delver, two free counter spells, and a surgical. So he has so much interaction with just that one land. Right, and the other two cards are Ponder and Brainstorm. Ponder and Brainstorm are the worst yeah. two cards in Tannen's hand. He sh Ross Let that sink in for Ross a second. <laughs> if only Ross could take the Delver. That would be the play. Can't can't do it, though. Yeah, shame this is uh, not a thought season, unfortunately. Yeah. And how do you punch out? Normally, I'd like to take Days here, but with two of them, I'm not very interested. Yeah, and there's even a spot where Days creates a really 
honestly just a great play pattern where you get to kind of have a virtually higher land count because you know here we see one land we think to ourselves uh that means he doesn't get to play a second land but days actually lets you make use of those land drops you'd be wasting otherwise so ross because he can't there's the two days as he decides to take the surgical extraction it's the most unique card here and that's a spot where ross may just have a cantrip heavy hand no grace is going to try to pick it apart yeah you just end up looking really dumb if you get your ponder dazed and then surgical extraction does a cabal therapy impression yeah. even then like with two dazes i just understand not wanting to go for it for a daze and tannin's going to make a turn one delver now his draw was a second land for the turn it was a copy of volcanic island one of the nice things about days is a lot of your cards at the end of the day they're just there to make mana so as long as you can resolve one of them like dark ritual eats two dazes Interesting. So Tannen actually, he valued information. So he had a, Flood of Strand was his only land, and he drew Volcanic Island. He, to try to bluff here, he fetched for Underground Sea. He didn't want Ross to know he drew a second land, even with a Brainstorm in his hand. And oftentimes, if with the Brainstorm, you'd want to play the fetch land second. Exactly. So he's really valuing information in this kind of matchup. Exactly. And there's a point where you're kind of expecting to find another land in the next turn or two anyway. So if this brainstorm draws you another fetch land, then that volcanic island was never there. Quote right. unquote. Yeah, it's interesting to see him adapt his plays. You know, he's he's missequencing in quotes because he wants to keep Ross guessing. Exactly. There's there's definitely a point where both players basically know all the cards the other person is playing with. Maybe not in their hand, but it's yeah. much closer to a game of chess or poker where you're kind of playing the numbers game. And if you're giving Ross as the Storm player perfect information, you, that's just very bad for you, you. You never want Ross to be certain there's no force of will. Exactly. Right. I, I, that's the card I think you want to be bluffing here. Always. Right. That's the big one. Maybe another surgical extraction. Free spells in general are... Yeah. Really what Grace is looking to represent. So, second land from Ross. His hand. See, got some mess. We have Infernal Tutor, Lotus Petal, Lion's Eye Diamond. It's very similar to last hand, actually. Is this the turn? It's Here's time. Here's Petal. Spell one. And the rare Infernal Tutor without Delirium. This is so, nice. Yeah, and this is just, you get to, he reveals Dark Ritual, which means he can find another Dark Ritual. Yep, and that checks both of those dazes. Yeah. We don't, it's funny, you have to actually read the card sometimes, because there is another mode. If you're not empty-handed, you can only find a second copy of something you already have. Oh, no, we only had to find a Dark, <laughs> dark ritual. ritual. This stinks. An attack in from Tannen. Delver does not transform this turn. And it'll be a Brainstorm. We'll see if that bluff gets punished. If he doesn't find a fetch land here, he may wish he had that move back. I guess he might just be stuck with cantrips and yeah. dazes in his hand. Yeah, it looks, like, knows. <laughs> it looks like he does have polluted delta. So this, as you mentioned, the volcanic island was never there. Right. And he's rewarded. And there's a spot where even if he, he would have to find exactly mana producing lands to get super punished. Yeah. Like if he hits wasteland, that's effectively a spell. So it... It'd honestly be a spot where he's pretty okay getting, quote-unquote, brainstorm locked into a bunch of disruptive pieces. Yeah, and Tan actually found three cards he liked. He, the cards he put back were the Volcanic Island and that Ponder, actually. You see him cracking the, the fluted Delta here. Putting back a Ponder is a power move, if I ever Yeah, especially when you have an untransformed Delver, which you could have transformed for free. And a Ponder is always a great card. He says, no, nah, it's got no time. It's got to do something else. Oh, we have another Ponder. Oh, okay, it was the second Ponder. <laughs> All right. No reason I to see. get greedy. One ponder is enough. Thank you very much. See, so if someone likes to play high tide, one ponder is never enough. Oh, oh I always my. just want more cantrips. Same. Same. Cantrips, finding cantrips is a good thing in that deck. Because they can't find anything else. It's all the deck is. Yeah, well, you s hey, you have <laughs> uh, you have tides and you have high tides. Those are your two card types. <laughs> all right, Tannen keeping on top. So Delver likely to transform next turn. And Ross setting up again. He has found a duress in the top three. I'll s interested to see if he's going to try to combo this turn. He knows that there can be up to two copies of days in Tannen's hand. 
And to me, and that feels like why he got all these dark rituals is because he's trying to invalidate the Dazes. Exactly. That card is pretty close to just a hymn to Torak. Yeah. For what? Ross's hand. Lion's Eye Diamond. Dark Ritual, Dark Ritual, Infernal Tutor. Does he have enough mana to pay for Dazes, Infernal Tutor, and Duress all at once? Probably not. But maybe with the Lion's Eye Diamond. It's close. Exactly. And there's a spot where if he Duresses here and sees less, there isn't anything else going on for free, he might have just yeah. wanted to go for it. Ross actually passes the turn. No land drop, no duress. Just says go. And now he starts taking damage. Tannin, the Delver transforms off of a ponder. Another one for Tannin. <laughs> just, all his deck is is ponders. Listen, the man likes to think. Ponder's great. And he'll cast. Maybe a second piece of pressure from Tannin's side, or just more more defense, more disruption is what he's looking for. Oh, it's a shuffle. Yeah, he doesn't like it, so he's going to go shuffle, get a random card off the top. Right now, his defense are two copies of Days, But they're known, and that's the issue. Right. Right now, Ross just has the luxury of trying to weave through those things. Right. And him pondering, keeping up on ponder, and missing, missing land, land drop is... Such a sign here that Tannen's going, all right, I need a force or a flesh yeah. or storm, something to that effect, and I need it right now. Because the way to beat Dazes is mana. But Storm's an interesting deck in that you, if you skip a land drop but you drew a ritual, it's just more mana, so it's actually better. And from Ross, we do have a Swamp. He'll start with Duress. This feels like the turn. Oh, here we go. Yeah, with the rest of Ross's hand. So let's take a look. It is Brainstorm, Days, Days, Pyroblast, and then a Dark Confidant. That one's not doing too much right now. And at this point, there's even an argument to be made for Ross just taking Brainstorm. Ross has right. been kind of weaving his way through to beat these Dazes with those Dark Rituals we saw earlier. And so if he thinks he can do that, just lock out any of his good top decks with his brainstorm, taking the brainstorm. Well, this is where Ross is going to have to go into the tank, right? Because if he can beat two dazes, it's not a question of maybe he can beat two dazes. He either can or he can't. Oh, if, here we go. Yeah, he's taking the brainstorm. That means Ross has counted it out, and he believes he can. And, he, <laughs> yeah, look, look at the face there. That's someone who's like, yeah, I did the math, and you're dead. Let me show you how. Five... It's a team sport. Tana yeah. knows what's going on. So, Dark Ritual. Spell two. Three black mana. Tana has to decide whether he wants to daze anything. Every time he dazes, it adds to storm count. Exactly. This is the spot where you go, well, I don't know if I do it now or if I wait till the payoff yeah. card or... I don't think it matters. I think Ross has him both ways. I, Ross is a smart man, and is, this is not his first rodeo with Storm. Yeah, because his hand is second Dark Ritual, Infernal Tutor, Lion's Eye Diamond. I just don't think taxing him for two mana at any point in this combo changes how this works out. Right, and Tannen doesn't have the information that we do. Right. That's the key difference here. He knows that Ross knows about the Dark Ritual, but there's a point where Tannen has to figure out, is Ross bluffing me Right. to try and get through these daises anyway? And if so, where am I supposed to daze? Yeah, I mean, it's hard, right? Ross taking the brainstorm suggests that you're just dead, but you want to play it out. You want to make sure that that's actually the case. So Tan's going to do it twice. Ross will pay for both dazes. Storm's now very high. Ross just has to get to a tendrils, more or less. Makes three black mana. Tan still has a red mana. That's not going to play here. Well, I guess it, he's floating it for this blast, but it's not going to matter. Ross storms up, gets Infernal Tutor, holds Lion's Eye Diamond, cracks Lion's Eye Diamond. That's spell number seven. You know, he can even just very short go get another Infernal Tutor and then tutor for Tendrils, and that would be lethal. He's going to go for a different line, and that's fine. It's all the same. It's passed in flames. Two more rituals. Brings him back up to six black, flashes back the Infernal Tutor, then Contendrils, and our Storm should be at 11 or 12 there. Either way, it's lethal, and we're going to head to a third game. A solid at least 18 damage. Yeah. Ross Miriam picking up the W there, first post-board match. 
I gotta say, you know, we're gonna break the fourth wall here a little bit. It'll be right. playful. It'll be my fault. You can blame me. Uh, all right, all right. That was that was some impressive uh, play by play. That was, I swear, it. Dude, were I you like an, combo decks. Were you an auctioneer like, in a past uh, life or something? Oh man, those, I those guys are great. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you draw influence. That was <laughs> that was nice. All right, so. We look looking at the so we had game number two here. I didn't actually see anything out of the sideboard from Ross. No, there's not very much that he's really looking to improve on. As strange as that may sound, his, his game one is kind of set up for these mm -hmm. disruptive packages with all the duresses. He may be looking at to go a little bit grindier with Tropical Island and Sylvan Library that package, and then at that point, Xanad Swarm is pretty close to free if you don't think Tannen's going to have any removal in his deck. Abrupt decay? Do, is, do, you, do you decay a Delver? Is that enough? Yeah, you also have the ability to tag Graft Digger's Cage. So okay. he's probably trimming on some amount of combo pieces in order to make room for all of that. But yeah. for the most part, we saw that game, his normal game plan is good enough if he j can just take out Force of Will. And it's very likely he knows that Tannen Grace doesn't have any Fluster Storms in his 75. Do you think he Fatal Pushes the Delvers, or is that too much? That's probably too much. All right. You're mostly using Fatal Push to tag things like Thalia. So we'll get ready for game number three. Now, Star City Games, we have our sale going on. Uh, we have hundreds of singles now on sale. It changes, e constantly changing. StarCityGames.com slash sale. You can pick up all sorts of different cards. Worth checking out. Those It resets on Monday, so make sure you get a chance to check out what we have on sale this week. Postmortem Lunge, you see that one here? Actually seeing some modern plays, you know, the Devoted Druid Lunge deck. I'm a big fan of the sale. I know I'm just going to sound like a shell and no one's going to take my word for this, but I built most of my Magic collection on the back of the SCG sale. All right. I'm, I'm a big, big fan of this. I always have to stock up on cards. Like, I always use the opportunity to stock up on nonsense cards. So, you know, like, when post Lorne Lunge is on sale, I'm like, ah, oh, if I don't have four of those, I really should pick them up. I don't really know what I'm going to do with them, but if there's a deck it's good in... You know, that's the kind of card I like. It's not doing anything honest. I got most of my Shockland collection on the back of these. You know, yeah. before they kind of themed the stales a little bit more. So <laughs> I have a bunch of non-English original Shocklands, a bunch of signed Shocklands, and so on. So I'm a big, big fan of this. I think I picked up some serum powders once off the sale. I picked up some retracts. Two kinds of people. Yeah. Two kinds of people. I probably should try to start getting those that place out of jeweled amulets after watching the Dominic Harvey match because you know it cost zero. Should you? It cost zero and was at the undefeated table, so that's like I'm probably in. Oh, it's it's way too late. MTG Fine Ants has already It's already, already bought right. out. Already it was bought, bought out. out at the start of the round, probably. So Ross Miriam, three and one, one of our from Connecticut, currently living in Roanoke. He's got Last year, five top eights and did pick up a win. All time, he has five wins and two invitational top eights. Almost had the back-to-back. -back. He had a win and a runner-up finish back during our two-day opens. Yeah, he is. He's one of the, honestly, just like the oldest mainstays of the tour, right? You know, he's a premium writer over on StarCityGames.com, and it's not an accident that he got that job. Yeah. Originally in Legacy, he kind of cut his teeth playing elves. <laughs> <laughs> Though now Ross is mostly, uh, you actually, he's got kind of developed a play style where he likes tempo or spell heavy blue decks. So a lot of times you'll see him playing things like Blue Moon in Modern and Storm or Sneak and Show in Legacy. You know what happened before Ross played Elves in Legacy? He played Maverick in Legacy. That is true. He was a Maverick this, player before. That's got to that. be the most famous SCG tour match of all time, right? Oh, Patrick probably. Patrick Sullivan versus Ross Miriam. It's a good match. I, I'm it's a good match. I, I mean, Ross has been on camera for long enough that we really should make sure we talk about that match. I think that's right. Oh, yeah, exactly, exactly. I want people to go back and see his hairdo. <laughs> that's what it is for me. I want people to see just the messy haired, um, oh, gosh, I can't remember the T-shirt. It doesn't matter. Tannen on the player for the third game. He's had turn one Delver the first two games. See if he can make a three for three. It's not what you want to see from the storm side of things. That card is scary. Oh, yeah. Amazing. It's not even as good as a snare thopter. Why does blue? It doesn't even have haste. Why does blue get wild, Nakato? Here it is again. It's messed up. This is what happens when you don't play removal. These cards are really scary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I just didn't register on. I didn't register removal again. It's, it's the blue lava spike. It's never it's, it's every turn. Blue gets like. 
<laughs> Lava spike with buyback. Lava spike you. Lava spike you. It's messed. Yeah, this is unfair. Lava spike you. And when one of my red opponent does it, I I accept. Lava spike you. Of course, Ross Lava mentioned it has. <laughs> it's still happening. <laughs> Oh my gosh, is it time? No, he's just playing around days. Maybe. We'll find out. He got a basic island. He's yeah, playing basic, around okay, days. Okay, yeah, Him leading on the lotus petal before casting a spell. Yeah, there just aren't there sense. aren't any rituals on on the island. Not yet. Yeah, just I think bl until... blue needs to start getting rituals. I think that's really. All right, modern horizons. Picture this. All right. One blue. Human wizard, 1-1. One, one. At the beginning of your upkeep, look at the top card of your library. If it's right. an instant or sorcery card, put a dark ritual into your hand. Because Stop why it. wouldn't <laughs> blue have this effect? I was wondering if it was going to be something like tame, like put a dark ritual into your hand. No. It's like, oh, okay, it's completely broken. <laughs> All right, I got one. Merfolk Spirit Guide. It does exactly what you think it does. That's probably okay, right? We could print that. Why Why wouldn't blue have that effect? It has all the other ones. <laughs> you know, you could give white a spirit guide and no one would even play it. Like, you just what, you cast Bermaz on turn two? <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Boom. You're so wholesome sometimes. You're like, tur could be <laughs> cranking out Sanctum Prelate or Thalia, and you're just like, what if they just cast a 3 4? Look, turn two Bermaz, it's ahead of schedule. Matthias, you're it. so right. I'm, yeah. I'm proud of you right now. Yeah. I think Merfolk Spirit Guide would be a problem, though. That is true. They, you could probably do some broken things with that card. That is true. Ten swings in, does not get a transform off Delver, but he does make Ponder. But he's shuffling off the Ponder. Go, Fugitive er Wizard, go! Shuffle off Ponder is this pre. We'll see where it is. It might be the fetch land and then the Ponder. Ross really going in on this cut and shuffle. <laughs> Got to keep him honest. Yeah, that was a draw ponder. So no guarantee on the transform. Ironically, the Delver not transforming that turn isn't that big of a deal because it doesn't change the number of turns. It would take a 3-2 to kill Ross. Right. This next turn is the one that Tannen's really hoping that we see Insect Elaboration come to play. Yeah, right. So you're, when you generally look at damage, you're counting number of turns. Now, against Storm, there is a second mode that the faster, and this is something that Burn uses, the faster you deal damage, the worse their ad nauseums become. So there is some advantage to getting that transform, but you're right, mostly he really wants to make sure it happens this turn. Exactly. There's sort of a point where there's not a colossal difference between being able to take 15 and being able to take 17. Yeah, they're, those are both lethal. Exactly. So it's when you start getting them below, say, 10. Okay. That's when the ad nauseum I had to changes. stop you here because Ross just cracked Lotus Petal for Dark Ritual. I think we're up. Something's happening. Nah. Uh, no, nothing's happening. Tan spell pierces it. That's that's a disaster. Yeah, it looks like Ross just bricked on a black source and thought, well, I, I have to go for it now. Yeah, it's not going to get better. Exactly. The longer you wait, the worse it gets. Oh, geez. And we you see know, a Force of Will hiding out in Tannen's hand. Yeah, end. I like Ross's move because if Tannen's only counterspell was Force of Will, he probably wouldn't have forced the Dark Ritual. He wouldn't have realized that Ross was land, didn't have the second land. Right. So Ross could have, like, gotten away with one. But when Tannen's card is Spell Pierce, unfortunately, it's just... Tannen's going to make that play 10 out of 10 times. Yep, exactly. You know that your card is going to... It's a conditional counterspell, and that condition is... The window for it's going to go away if you keep letting rituals resolve. So, Brainstorm on upkeep to set up the transform. Tannen shows Pyroblast to Ross, transforms and swings in, Ross down to 15. Right now, Tannen's hand is Pyroblast, Force of Will, and a blue card. A Don't mind hand. it. We take those. Ross needs lands. No black mana source yet. Tan makes the second Delver. I don't know if he has a blue card to go with that Force of Will yet. I think he has a Ponder hiding out in there. Okay. So the question was whether he wanted to... Of the two blue cards, he has to hold one and cast one, and he wasn't sure which one he wanted to go. Exactly. Yeah. 
That makes sense. Well, it looks like Ross found a lotus petal. Tana Force of Wills it. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Just, don't do that. that. That's a little aggressive. Listen, just trying to put the aggro and aggro control over here. <laughs> yeah, even if this Delver doesn't transform, it still takes a turn off the clock. So yeah, Lotus Petal, does it resolve? <laughs> Black Mana, Dark Ritual. Now, do you force a will this? Mother, may I? Yeah, so you want to end up hitting this Dark Ritual because the last couple of turns, it's left a spot where Grace, if you I need to pause you. Is this another Spell Pierce? Tannin's fetching. Oh my gosh, this is so brutal. Is this another Spell Pierce? Please, please don't do it. Oh God. Had oh. oh, this is just carnage. This hurts so much. And so what did you pierce? Uh, t a dark ritual that was peddled and another dark ritual that was peddled. Six <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you have to do it to the dark ritual, even, even if it were force, because you just feel so bad if you're in a spot where if you say it's force ponder, yeah. if then Ross has the opportunity to say, use the three black mana, use the first one on a duress. A swing for six, Ross to nine. Tannen's hand is again pyroblast force of will blue card. Ross draws Black Mana Source, but he's down to nine. He really he has two turns to work with. Okay. And, and he can't use Ad Nauseam anymore. Ross gets to discard his hand before he loses. This is fine. Yeah, I mean, he plays Lion's Eye Diamond, right? Yeah, exactly. He's going to play all these cards, and then Tan is going to force. Okay. I saw you've been using discard his hand like he's going to crack an LED. No, no, no. He's just going to cast a bunch of rituals, and, and then, then the card that matters is going to also be placed in his graveyard. Hmm. Well, maybe he has a duress possible that is true at a glance it looked like his hand was mostly rituals yeah. if he had petal dark ritual duress starts with infernal tutor here he does have threshold do you think he would have led on dark ritual or duress i mean at this point you have to lead on the dark ritual okay so dress could still be in his hand it would make sense right so he he's choked on black mana at the moment yeah tan deciding if he wants to force of will a cabal ritual it's tempting because he only needs two turns here. Normally you wouldn't force, but he's so close to the finish line. Yeah, there's a point where you're just trying to whittle down the resources that Ross has available. Yeah. Right, because if you don't force, the concern would be, I would think, is if Ross's hand is something like another Cabal Ritual plus Duress plus Infernal Tutor, you might lose. Right, and there's almost a point where Tannen has to go, well, don't I also lose to that hand next turn? Yeah. So, spell two, that made five black mana. Spell two is Lion's Eye Diamond. Ross only has two cards left. Tannen really hopes one isn't Duress. And it's going to be Infernal Tutor. And he's going to crack with it on the stack. Tannen Force of Wills it. And Ross says, yeah, I can't beat that. He was shoving That's all it. in. And it is Tannen Grace. Two games to one. He is your winner and improves to four and one. That's a